we're the History Boys. Uh, all the History Boys are here. As you know, I am Tyler Armentrout, uh, a History Boy and a uh, friend of the wild. Um, <laughs> what? Just the wild in general. The wilds. The, the wilds. wilds. The, you know, uh, I, I mean, like, the forests, like the, the, the creatures in the forest, people that are born to be wild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're raised in the wild, like that character from Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. Uh, Is that right? Gao. Gao. Gao, yep. Yeah. Gao. Yeah. No and anyhow, I'm about. I'm sitting next to uh who am I sitting next to? Gao. Uh Chris Whedon, uh history boy. And raised and by wolves. I am raised by the wolves, but I am not a friend of the wilds. I very much prefer You're an enemy of the wilds. Yeah, if anything, I very much prefer <laughs> the indoors and my childhood was very hard and I don't care for the wolves. I've cut them out of my family. I don't see them anymore. Oh. And I ignore their phone calls. I'm just I'm one of the reasons I quit Facebook was every time you know one of one of his wolf parents would post something like politically polarizing on his Facebook yeah. page and then we had to deal with that so I just you big, know big big Trump guys very those yeah. very conservative yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm Zach Mack I am also a history boy and a wolf enthusiast uh, currently mm. my quarantine body is slowly morphing into Danzig's current body there you go uh, <laughs> and as we know Glenn loves his wolves and I myself would like to. Befriend his wolves. There you go. His wolves. Yes. His wolves. Yes. Well, his wolf. 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 His wolf. Wow, 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 wolf, I guess is how he oh. actually pronounces it. You're becoming more lupine by the day. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I am Jerry Nash. I am a history boy. Thank you for joining us. What are we talking about today, Jerry? Yeah, Jerry. <laughs> today we are talking <laughs> about Eric the Red and Leif Erikson. Ah. Was his favorite color blue? No yellow. Uh, their Thank favorite <laughs> yeah, favorite <laughs> recordings are not uh, fa- no, their favorite colors are not recorded. Uh, yeah. Fuck history. But we do know that he had some serious <laughs> anger management problems. Oh yes. Hence, hence the the red. He was yeah, his face was red. Yeah. Mostly from drinking too much and beating his wife. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> Who knows? Probably probably not. Bang! Yeah. Zoom! Uh, straight to the moon. Yeah. 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 So about five hundred years. Five centuries, or half a millennia, before Christopher Columbus, the first European to set foot on North America was a Norse explorer named Leif Erikson. How do you do that? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm going to tell you. (laughs) It's like, oh, there's more? Oh, we're done. (laughs) No, yeah, that's the whole episode. I mean, that's it. Bye. Where the where the where the flights? Where where the flights? You know, where where they space in the seats on the flights? Did he have to wear a mask? I mean. Uh, no. Relevant questions of our time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Discovery and the adventurous spirit was in Leif's blood. His father, who's another Norse explorer, was Eric the Red, who founded the first permanent Norse colony on what was at the time the mysterious island of Greenland. Ooh. Ooh. Spooky. And Greenland's the one covered in ice. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're going to talk about... We're going to talk all about that. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. The old switcheroo. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They'll never know. Yeah. The Norse sagas tell us of the Greenlanders, the Icelanders, Leif and Eric, and they only really existed orally until they were recorded centuries after. Some of the first ones were 250 years after things had happened. Oh, uh, like the Jesus times. I'm sure they got all the details perfect. Yeah, no. (laughs) they, They had to because, you know, if they were recorded orally... You only got so much you can put on the page before you got to wait and then wait for it to come back again. Maybe think about something that brings you back to a romantic time so you can inject another load of ink onto the page. Yeah, I get what you're saying now. I, I was like, it. what the fuck? Sometimes you got to follow him along yeah. through his yeah. madness <laughs> until you realize what he's like, getting what at. the hell are you talking about? What I'm about? saying is back then you'd get, you'd get an oral pleasure and then you would eject yeah. that, that ink, the masculine ink. Onto a page you know, onto and people a... would consider it a story? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? And then once your page yeah. takes a shower, a then all that ink goes away and you gotta just tell them what happened <laughs> this is bonkers <laughs> okay <laughs> let's, just, let's just move on what you're saying is bonkers so. yeah. i wanted to make a joke about uh, recording it anally <laughs> oh that's so much better than the thing I did. <laughs> so because of this especially especially because when it was written down it, they were written down by christians and a lot of these sagas were the you know people taking part in in these stories were pagan and there's a slant to the sagas you'll notice we'll we'll see it here too 
that sometimes somebody that is steadfast pagan gets a bad rap in the story. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's to make them look more uncivilized yeah. because of their views. You would think that the like the the yeah, I'd imagine it's the Catholic Church doing doing the the Christian writings. Of- uh, well, the thing is, is they were at, uh, they were, they were Icelandic. Okay, and they were they were Christian. It was like Christian monks in Iceland. Okay. and we'll talk about why they were able to sort of write it down without any without anyone looking over their shoulder. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were far away from Italy, you know, far away from the church, but they still kind of knew church doctrine. Okay. Right? Sure. Yeah. So, but they had their own spin on it. So rather than yeah. doing what, uh, what what the Catholics would do and just appropriate them and make them Christian, yes. they yes. instead just made them somewhat, maybe, yeah. bad guys. Well, well, the way uh, Eric the Red is depicted in that time, in like medieval etchings and things that, of course, were paid for by the church he almost looks like a crusader okay he's in like like full crusader armor he would have never worn anything like that they were just trying to make him seem a little bit more palatable yeah exactly right yeah so that's kind of how it they get confusing the sagas get confusing because of this they they disney pocahontas him (laughs) sort of yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh, they, had to, they had to make sure they write it so it would sell well in China. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that and they like overlap. The sagas overlap each other. They're written by different people. They overlap each other and they tell the same events, but sometimes they're in different orders. Ooh. Sometimes they don't have a person doing a certain thing. Sometimes it says, "Ah, it wasn't that bad." Some, you know. So I, I've done a lot of research and I've kind of pieced t- together what many people think is the somewhat truth folks we got a rashomon style scenario on our hands <laughs> <laughs> and jerry just to clarify to the people at home uh you do uh speak and uh read uh fluent norwegian correct no no i do not okay. i'm going to butcher all of these norse names and i don't don't speak old norse norse either so yeah i'm gonna butcher the hell out of these scandinavian cool. names. sick yeah butcher them on purpose <laughs> I, no, I'm gonna really like, try. Bajorn. Yeah. <laughs> no, I actually there there was a book that I listened to for this, for this thing. It I think it was put out by Amazon, but I had a credit and I was like, all right, because they tried to make sense of the sagas, and the the guy reading the last chapter straight up pronounces the J, <laughs> a, as an English J. It says Bajorn. Bajorn and like Bajornhild, instead of Bjornhild. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it Bjork? No, it's Bjork. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Amazon, find that man and fire him. Yeah, Re- re-record that last Seriously, third of the what book, the please. Fuck? And remove all the references that they 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 entered this age of exploration, so they could better uh, do two-day shipping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. shipping is a part of it. I wonder. No, if, there you go. Excuse me. <laughs> Ideologies everywhere. Although a group of Irish monks known as the Papars had already been living on Iceland, credit for discovering Iceland goes to a Norse Viking named Nadod. Nadod? Yeah, he, he discovered it accidentally. After, after trying to hit the Faroe Islands, which was sort of north of the British Isles. Right. And he was blown off course. And he, like, saw it, and he saw, like, the jagged mountains and, you know, the ice, and was like, huh. Look at and that. He, and uh, they, they kind of... They landed there for a second, and he just kind of climbed a hill and, like, looked over it, and he was like, oh, this place is cool. And as he was leaving, it started to snow. <laughs> so he called it Snowland. Oh, Beautiful. And he went back home. Yeah, he was pining for the fjords. Leave it up, leave it up to Nad Dog the Rad. <laughs> Happy accidents always happen to him. Nad Dog the Rad. <laughs> Nad Dog. Mad dog. <laughs> <laughs> so so th- that's so cool though. Like, how serendipitous for uh, Nadod to be blown off course to essentially find Christmas Town. Like, <laughs> kind of. That's what happens in uh, Night Before Christmas. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a retelling of this story. Right. Yeah. yeah. It is this. Uh, 
Verbatim. Beat for beat. <laughs> Nardog was, in fact, a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how his name is progressively <laughs> <been> changing. <laughs> this is how, like, these things work. How, like, tall tales happen. So later, another man named Gardars Varverson. Oh, dude, buckle up. <laughs> Jerry, you're doing great. We're, buckle up. It's we, we funnier got than Nerd lot, Dog. We got lots more to go through. <laughs> so which Pokemon is this? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he's not a Pokemon. He's the world's strongest man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> The guy's like fucking 12 feet high. He was also blown off course when he spotted Iceland. And he was actually the first person to circumnavigate the island to prove that it actually was an island. Could have been a peninsula. Right. Could have been anything. They didn't know. This shit isn't landlocked. Dope. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) In about 868 CE, a man by the name of Hrafna Floki Vilgarderson, or Raven Floki. Cool. Way cooler. He went there on purpose. Uh, His nickname was Raven because as he got closer to where he thought Iceland would be, he let some crows loose in different directions, and he just went into the direction of the one that didn't come back, because it found land and it landed. Oh. Right. Whereas the others would come back to the ship, right? So yeah. He didn't find a party, he didn't find a party. We're going that way. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. it's also unfortunate because uh, uh, Alex Proy has copyright, uh, copyright the, the, the crow, so he right. was able <laughs> yeah. to use that as yeah. his nickname. Yeah. Ravens are cooler. Yes. Yeah. Because oh. they're bigger. Yeah. Yes. And as a Norse person, having more than two crows was really tough because you're like Hugin, Muin, Munin, and mm. then you're like, Hugin, hey, right. yeah, Hugin too. <laughs> <laughs> David, <laughs> Huey, and Lewis, and then the news and the news. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. Uh, their their ways of navigation weren't, weren't exactly on the Polynesian level, but it still worked. You know, like. But who is? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. The Polynesians were the best. We we see this in in the sagas all the time that somebody was blown off course. They're like ah fuck, and they like find shit. They find shit know? on accident, a lot. A lot, <laughs> yeah. But they were master shipbuilders, master shipbuilders, okay. but not as master navigators as much as the Polynesians were. They, they should have got a Polynesian navigator. Oh, or the Polynesians should have got a Norse uh, shipbuilder. Yeah, right. Well, put them put them together, and you got yourself a winning combo. Yeah. There you go. And you almost kind of have it with Thor Heyerdahl. Except yeah. Thor here it all believed in some dumbass shit. <laughs> <laughs> so at first, uh, he totally dug Iceland. But after spending one long, dark winter there, he packed up and went back to Norway. Was he by himself? He was well, he's with a crew. Okay, I, I just imagine him here there, like, at first he gets there and he's just, like, dancing with a beer in each hand. <laughs> and then, like, a year later, he's just got, like, one beer and he's bobbing his head and he's like, I think I want to go home. Well, yeah, he's well, planning like, for the fjords. Yeah. Well, you know, the summers are really nice there. Yeah. And right. he's like, this is kind of awesome. Yeah. And, like, then the winter hits and he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck <laughs> is this? Yeah. And he goes back and he's telling everyone of this place, you know. Plus, and, Reykjavik uh, is so expensive. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, he told everyone that it was the land of the ice and snow with the midnight sun where the hot springs flow. Ah. Yeah. Huh? I get it. Nice. It's yeah. like that song. Yeah. By ACDC. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. By Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah. Oh, those crows? Yeah. Oh, ravens, my bad. <laughs> uh, but he was so glad to be back in Norway after after being in that long, dark winter. You know, he's like, oh, dude, it's full of ice in the winter. It sucks. And they're like, well, what do you call it? And he goes, I- Iceland. <laughs> so he was the first one to name it Iceland. I- it's just because the winter pissed him off so much. <laughs> Shitty, cold ass winterland. Yeah. <laughs> and he would every time he would say Iceland, he would kind of grit his teeth. Yeah. Iceland. Iceland. Yeah. Look, Iceland. Looking at his black toes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These used to be normal color toes. <laughs> so later, an expedition led by Ingolfur Arnarson mm-hmm. went to Iceland meaning to colonize it, actually meaning to settle it. Mm-hmm. Because it was free. There was no one there. Where did you know? the Irish go that were there? Oh, the, the monks? Yeah. I, they all died. They either died or left. You yeah, know. It's the winter just They sucks. were just there first. It's cold. Yeah, yeah. As the legend goes, he as he approached it, he took three carved totems, and he tossed them into the ocean. And he said... 
you know, wherever they washed ashore is where, I'll, where I will build my settlement. Let Thor decide my fate. Cool. Dude, nice. So, three years later, searching for those totems, his crew finally found the totems. Yeah, it was like, what? Washed up in a rocky bay. Like, holy shit. What? Remember those totems? Yeah. (laughs) We never thought we'd actually find them. Coincidences like that are how you get religion to happen. (laughs) Well... Where they found them is modern day Reykjavik. Hmm. Well, I mean, I'm just like he's like yeah. Thor has shown us providence, you know, like. But it's just it's just the tides and currents, <laughs> yeah. happenstance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he actually called it Smoky Bay, which Ooh. is Reykjavik, because of the volcanic activity and all like the you know the steams and mm-hmm. the hot springs and everything coming out, you know. From the barbecue, Bay. just... Yeah. 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 <laughs> Icelandic barbecue. Isla- oh, the they're known for be. their barbecue. <laughs> <Yes>. Yeah. <laughs> and fermented fish. Yeah. And I know when I see smoke coming out of a mountain, I'm like, we should put a town down there. <laughs> yeah. Right next to it. Yeah. Yeah. Pea shark. I still uh, want to try it. I've tried something that was like fermented shark, and it was so gross. It Was, was it the pea shark? I don't know. They didn't tell me they were peed on it, but... They may have. <laughs> I want to try the pea shark. Sure like, it's not pea shark, but they pee still pee now. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they peed on the rest of my food. <laughs> <laughs> because of the things you said. Right in you front of me on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I must have uh, done some sort of Icelandic faux pas. Yeah, yeah. must have offended their ways. Bet- yeah. Between the peeing on my food and the guy telling me to stay the fuck out of Reykjavik, uh, I don't think they like me very much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Iceland was uninhabited, and to the people in Norway who were running out of arable land, and under the first king of Norway, like the first king that unified all of Norway. I bet you that guy was 12 feet tall. His name was Harold Fairhair. Oh. He was a pretty boy. Well, he had had long hair, and it was blonde. Yeah. And sometimes it's it's translated to Harold Finehair. Ooh. But, like, his statue... Has it flowing in the wind? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Dude, I bet that guy was hot. Yeah, but he was kind of a tyrant. Yeah. He, uh, Doesn't the mean way he's not he was, handsome. The way he was consolidating his power and the fact that they were running out of good farmland. Because what, you, what they don't really tell you about like Norse people is, aside from all the raiding and stuff, which you can only, you can only actually call somebody a Viking if they're actually raiding... Yeah. And in the act of raiding is the only time somebody's actually a Viking. Sure. A Viking means kind of like raider. In a yeah, sense. yeah, it means raider, kind yeah. of. Yeah, and, and uh, but to the rest of the Norse society and people, they're, they're, they have strict law codes and they're a farmer society and herder yeah. society. Sure. If you're not um, Viking, you're stopping. Yeah. <laughs> so they wanted to get away from that. And so, like, a lot of the Icelanders were like a lot of settlers in, in a lot of history that they were kind of people that were down and out, some ne'er do wells, mm, some cool. roustabouts, they some raiders. Figured yeah. figured the first Not job raiders. that they, they had was time, good though. enough, you know, the person that they settled down with, like good enough, yeah. you know. Not really shooting for the just stars, settling. you know, just settling. Yeah. Well <laughs> <laughs> Well, and if you were there first, you got the best land. Yeah. Sure. You know? Early bird. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if you were banished from Norway for committing a crime, or if you were engaged in a blood feud Ooh. with oh. someone else, it was good to go to Iceland. That's why I went to Iceland. You know? Yeah. You the, were blood, the blood feud. feud. Yeah. Figured. Luckily, that guy was very old and he died of natural causes. <laughs> so I came back over there. He's in his 90s. <laughs> you won the blood feud by default. <laughs> it's like a, like a Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah. Instead of, like, yeah. fighting the end, just, uh,. Yeah. Just, just just wait it out. Leave your leave your PlayStation Two on for a week. Yeah, does that work? Yeah, and he dies. Yeah, of old he, age. he dies of old age. You don't even have to leave leave it on. You just have to come back to it after yeah. a while. Because your your, sure. your memory me. card uh, says what time it is on it. So if that, you if you go yeah. forward like a week, if you put the system clock forward a week and go back into your save, he dies right. of old age. That is the most Kojima thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Or you just not play it for a week and go back and play it, and he's dead. I crept up it's on so him and good. shot him in the face good. with a shotgun. That's what I did. Nice. Yeah, nice. I had to do that. I had to like creep up and then run up and boom, boom. Welcome to the Kojima cast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for the first two centuries that Iceland existed. It existed as a commonwealth with no centralized government, which is kind of cool. Like, they didn't actually have, like, a lord or king of Iceland. 
and Norway was far enough away where they still answered the king in Norway, but it wasn't like, he's not here. Like, <laughs> what is he going to do? He'll send a raven. Yeah, so... Like, you guys got to cut that out. <laughs> yeah. This is straight out of Monty Python. Yeah. We don't yeah. have a lord. Yeah, like, that, that whole bit. I was thinking that too. Well, they're too. talking about being an arco communist. I didn't. Right. <laughs> I didn't know you were called Dennis. <laughs> Man, <laughs> thirty-seven. I'm not old. Uh, thirty-seven. <laughs> yeah, and he starts explaining Marxian rhetoric to him. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. So what they 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 had their own set of laws that was inherently Norse, but every year they would con- convene. For an all thing, all and thing. It's called an all thing. It's not just, big on imagination and like uh, <laughs> it's like a most not a most things. No, well, it's not a regular uh, thing. All <laughs> thing. Yeah, there yeah. You go. It's, it's like a, it's not a normal thing. It's like you get you know it's an all like thing. hey it's there an all thing. you're an all thing. Hey, nice. <laughs> but yeah, everyone gathered together and everyone could vote oh, on cool. like the new laws. But the thing is, is of course none of it was written down. So every village had a law speaker. Yeah. Now this is somebody who memorized all the laws, and any time anything happened, he would recite the laws. So, oh, so God. what you're saying is that they had a dedicated narc. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hey, hey, that's Fuck illegal. Well, they'd probably just knock on his door and pull him out and go like, "Hey, can, nerd, <laughs> can you tell this guy that theft is illegal?" And he's like. Yes, according to the law, da 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 And they're like, see? See? <laughs> <laughs> you, think it, you think they ever like, took advantage of that role? Being like, they're like, hey, you're, you're robbing this bank. And he's like, it's not illegal. <laughs> well, no. They're like, fuck. The law speaker was like one of the most important roles in Norse society. Yeah, and they didn't let him out of his tank anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think they took well enough care of him that he never had to like use it for his own ends oh yeah sure he was constantly yeah. submerged in wine he was <laughs> insufferable to be around in social gatherings constantly putting on his fedora and saying well actually <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm actually just I'm picturing the navigators from Dune oh yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> so in about 950 CE Eric Thorvaldsen was born in Norway do we know where in Norway? I'm sorry for interrupting. We do. Do you want me to look that up? I wonder if it's one of the places that I've been to. I haven't been in Norway. Oh, I fucking love it. I want to talk so much about it, but I also know we gotta I know. do the story. Have so you been I, to Iceland? Okay. I have not been to yeah. Iceland. Jerry's got it. Yes, he was born in a place called Yeren. Modern day Yeren. Yeren. J and then the A-E symbol. Right. R. E-N. Yay, huh. Is, Yay I, I wonder if that's uh, on the west coast y- over there. Y- 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 Yarin, Yarin, something like that. It is on the west coast, yes. Oh, cool. The best coast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought so. At all times, the best coast. Regardless of country. By the time he was ten years old, his father Thorvald Asvaldsen was banished from Norway for murder. Oh. I mean, with a name like that? Come on. Who'd he murder? Yeah. Ladies. The sagas are silent. Who on didn't who, he murder? <laughs> the sagas are silent on who he murdered. But, He's like a serial killer. <laughs> uh, it, it was either murder or manslaughter, but, uh, you know, at that point... Drunk driving, hit somebody with a car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hit him with his truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Matthew Broderick. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Fuck. And that's the reason why I got swept under the rug, even back then. Yeah, and, and Ted Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. Lake, Lake Chippecottic? Chip Aquatic? Yeah, something like that. That's the, la- that's the, the life the... Chip Aquatic. <laughs> that's, that's the lake that it's... poor woman drowned in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, like many other Icelandic settlers, Thorvald took his family to go settle Iceland because, yeah, they banished him. Yeah. And so he's like, well, it feels like Iceland. the Australia. Kind you of. Know? Yeah. Only, yeah. only they don't make you go there. Yeah. It's just like, I guess I'm you going to You get the Iceland. fuck out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Yeah, right, exactly. You don't have to go to Australia, but you can't stay here. Well, well, and to anyone that, like, didn't want to swing an axe through an Anglo-Saxon's head in, like, yeah. modern-day UK, Iceland was very attractive. Who wouldn't want to do that? Yeah. Well, well Vikings straight up did. Yeah, I know. The but, shit that I find really fascinating, though, is that Norwegians would rather go over to Iceland than, you know, try to go over to Sweden, like... Well, the Swedes are Norse, sure, and they're their own type of Norse, 
But the Swedes kind of did their own thing. That what they did is they went down through the rivers in like where in the Baltics, yeah, mm-hmm. and down down through Russia. And actually, the ones that did that were called the Rus, and it's what gives the Russian people their name today. Ah, huh, the no Rus, shit. yes, were were a fun descended fact. from from Swedish settlers that traded down the the Volga River, the Volga River, I believe, yeah, down huh. there. A lot of trade happened there. So like any anything that would come from Iceland or something like that, chances are it would make it all the way down sometimes as far as Constantinople. Oh wow. And like Fuck. even a wow. lot of these Vikings even visited Constantinople. Which is crazy. That that is crazy. Just go, going on holiday. Going yeah. On no, there's wow. there's a lot of people that actually did. It wasn't actually that weird. I'd be living my life on a riverboat going down the Volker playing blackjack and fi- five card stud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a dragon boat. Yeah, on a dragon boat. Yeah. On a on a steamboat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I just invented. Nice. <laughs> Mark Twain over here. Yeah. So it was here in Iceland that. Eric became a man. For them, being 12 was considered being a man. Yeah. So I also well, feel that Well, you're way. 8 feet tall, you're 300 pounds of muscle, <laughs> full bush. Yeah. You're a man at that point. You got a full beard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he would learn how to fish, farm, build boats, and build houses, and to fight like a true Viking warrior. So you're 12 cool. years old, you gotta build a boat. Yeah. This episode's for you, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone seen that those two guys on YouTube? It's like that dude and his dad that built like an no. authentic Viking house with as much as they could. At least they they use period correct tools. Oh, like sick. only hand tools. They don't use like table oh, saws wow. or anything. It's really interesting. And what they found out? Well, they kind of knew this beforehand. But what they really found out is that. It's hard. These what? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, and there there would usually be eight people, not just two, working on these houses. Somewhere around eight to ten. You would actually share it with your livestock too. Oh. So there'd be like a partition, and like there'd be cows and horses back like there, right over there. Yeah, and goats and stuff. But that smelled great. And yeah. there would have benches along the walls, and that's you'd sleep. Cool. Nice. And uh, the hole in the top didn't actually help very much. With the fire in the middle, mm-hmm. it's a very smoky, very smoky house. Oof. Yeah, so, like, they're breathing in that smoke all the time. These guys did not live very long. Yeah. You know, even if they didn't go out Vikinging, you know. It's like a jazz club in 1922. <laughs> <laughs> the Norse people, they, they played games all the time. And usually, like, these games had to do with, like, being strong and whatnot. So they would... They would have, like, stone-lifting competitions. They I've to... seen ESPN4. I, yeah. know, I know what they... I, I know what's going on. It's kind of like... The way I picture it, it's, like, lacrosse and, like, stickball. And it's also rugby, because mm-hmm. it's, like, full contact. But you also have, like, a stick part of the time. Well, yeah. And so, like, they'd play this rough-ass sport, you know, and it, it you know, kind of just reinforced their warrior culture and i stand by the fact that any sport that doesn't have a stick is a lame sport <laughs> so baseball is the only baseball, baseball cricket, hockey, hockey cricket tennis lacrosse lacrosse golf. um golf those if, are bad if you're not hitting something with a stick eh, i'm not interested <laughs> <laughs> t-ball Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's not leave it's that a man out. sport yeah okay. but a game that women and men both t- took part in was drinking. Oh, that's my favorite nice. game. Yeah. And here's how they would here's what they would do. Here was their favorite drinking game. They would down their glass of mead or beer or in rare cases wine and they would insult the other team. Cool. This just sounds like us at the rendezvous. I know. And then the, the <laughs> yeah. other the other, that's besides the point. Uh, the other team would do the same and then insult them. And the 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 point of the game was to be the last team standing to still be articulate and still come up with witty insults after after a bunch of drinks so like sometimes they'd go i don't know you're dumb and they're like boo yeah. <laughs> you know we um, need to bring this back yeah i love it <laughs> yeah i guys i didn't know that we were athletes until this moment yeah <laughs> <laughs> Getting drunk and talking shit. That's, uh, that's the only thing I'm good at. Yeah. Yeah. It's the reason why I'm not allowed in Applebee's anymore. <laughs> so Eric got the nickname The Red 
Probably for his fiery red hair and beard. Oh. That's pretty much it. That's what I assumed. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. And he's sunburnt easily. <laughs> well, that's also probably, probably true. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so Eric the Red married a girl from a well-to-do family named Thjordhild. Ooh. That's <laughs> uh, her last name. Jorun's daughter. Because the, their names work yeah. in the same, you know, yeah, daughter, right. son. I've seen know. Thor. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a hand it's a handful of uh, unusable Scrabble pieces and then son. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they had uh, four children: that Thorvald, Thorstein, and Leif. And they actually had one daughter named Freydis, but Freydis may have been an illegitimate daughter. Ooh, Ooh. intrigue! Uh, I have a yeah. question about scandalous uh, Thorstein. Yeah, Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> At desk. <laughs> I don't know why one of them would have been. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they they made a home for them themselves and they and they prospered and and like the the area that he got was probably like a part of his marriage dowry. So yeah, they made a, a happy home for a while, but Eric did not really get along with his neighbors really yeah. ever. It's because he kept ever. kept playing music way too loud. <laughs> yeah. Fucking full volume. <laughs> he, it also didn't help. <laughs> I thought it was because of the pile of bricks that were outside of his home, and it was just devaluing uh, the neighborhood property. That didn't well, yeah. help. And he, well, and he mowed his lawn with a scythe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And let's not forget about the El Camino on bricks. Well, I was going to say trans, yes. I am. <laughs> <laughs> he has both. He has an El Camino that he's working on, and a trans mm-hmm. am that he's waiting for his brother to come get. But yeah, <laughs> right. He's not coming to get it. Uh, <laughs> Been Project there for, cars. for three years. <laughs> yeah. Three years. His brother's not coming for that thing. Yeah. His brother comes by all the time to work out in the garage. Yeah. No, I know. Smoke they just don't talk about that Trans Am. Listen to seventies metal. Yeah, yeah. Listen to Fog Hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a bad it's tranny. A slow ride on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> slow ride on repeat. He's smoking fucking J's. Putting up two eighty on the fucking bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't that in your outline, Jerry? <laughs> So yeah, they were happy. That is until a group of Eric the Red's thralls, which were slaves. Cool. Uh, but yeah, again, same kind of thing with Rome. They had upward mobility. They had a way to be freed and and be their own class of freedmen. A lot, a lot in the same way that ancient Rome worked. And yeah, it was anybody that that they had captured. You know. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so less twelve years, more Star Wars episode one, The Phantom Menace. What? Because he was a slave. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Little Annie. He got to say yippee and go home at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they had it that good. But. I feel like he had a fairly good relationship with his uh, junk dealer with his slave. With his, frog, with his master. With his frog man. That with Jewish things? frog man yeah. that could fly. Yeah. Um, hey, I didn't make him Jewish. That was George Lucas. That was George Lucas. Yeah. But uh, when he sees him later, he's like, little Annie, so good to see you. And he's like, good to see you too, fucking slave ass master yeah. piece of shit. Yeah. I'm I was going to crack your ass. No. Gave me Shylock vibes. Like specifically the character. I know what you mean. I'm not I'm not throwing out epithets here, okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a couple of Eric the Red's thralls accidentally caused an avalanche that crushed his neighbor Val Valjoff's home. I'm not laughing at the name, I'm laughing at he caused. He crushed his. Crushed his house. He's like, you know what? To make. You, you keep complaining about me playing music too loud. I'm crushing your house with an avalanche. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh no, my prayers to Freya are working too well. Yeah. Well, it's because he kept pulling those trees out of the air, causing uh, his erosion. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like my dad. Yeah. <laughs> so Valjov's friend, Aolf the Fowl. Uh oh. Did he choose that name? I think it was just a nickname that people gave him. Like, well, he's stunk. Like, so. He tells yeah. it like it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, he killed three of Eric's thralls, and it sent Eric into a rage. And he got red. Yep, he got red. He's like, boy, uh, is my face red. Yeah. So Eric killed Eyolf the Fowl, and another man named Holmgang Hrafen killed these two guys, and, I, and they were really closely related with Val, Valjoff's family. Sure I bet you off. You off? The foul. I, I bet yeah. he shit his pants so much when he died. Yeah. Like full, you know, not, yeah, like a full oh, just foul. flow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was it was like a solid three pounds of lutefisk just straight through the system. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I honestly think that like as I was learning all these names and like 
Old Norse, like, ways of saying things. I just imagined, like, oh, the way they do... The, the reason why they pronounce everything like this is you have to sort of imagine everybody pronouncing everything from behind a beard. Yeah. <laughs> so everything's like... Sure. <laughs> Even the women. Yeah. Like dwarves. Yeah. From Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Oh. Uh, they actually believed in dwarves in, the, in Norse culture, but they weren't... They're like Skyrim dwarves. They're That's... not actually like... You know, diminutive people. They're yeah. actually like these elves that live underground. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's where that's where dwarves actually come from. That's where Tolkien got the idea. A yeah. lot of he got a lot from Norse mythology. But well, it, elves, it, it, dwarves, it's... wizards, things like that. Trolls. Trolls yeah. were definitely a big one. Fun fact: on my honeymoon in Norway, we got to drive up this thing called the Trollstigen, ah. which is like the super badass like switchbacks going up a fucking mountain with the waterfalls and shit. Oh, that's dope! Beautiful, beautiful. And then you get up to the top, and like you're just in the clouds in Norway, and like you see all these like rocks that are stacked up and shit like that. And I'm thinking to myself, what fucking hippie with you know fucking dreadlocks, like. Some some white kid, you know, in reggae gear. <laughs> who, who the fuck did this? Right. You know, and and their whole thing was just like, nah, man. Trolls did that. <laughs> nice. that those are little teeny tiny troll homes. Don't I like fuck their with trolls them. so much better than the trolls we have now. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. the one in Fremont. Oh no, I mean the ones on uh, the internet. Yeah, that's what uh, I was thinking. Uh, well, he goes on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> talking shit, surfing the information superhighway. Fucking, he has every right to go on just, the internet. Hating on celebrities, <laughs> saying MAGA posts, you know. Yeah. Destroying local businesses on Yelp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Fremont Troll does all those things. Yes. So, of course, the victim, the victim's family was outraged, and a thing was convened. Not an all thing? No. An all thing happens once a year where you decide on the laws. But a thing is like a court. A thing. A thing. Like, uh... From outer space, so yeah. they um, just couldn't think of a name of it. It's a thing. It's like, what are we gonna call these uh, these things that we do? That's fine. Just call it yeah. thing. <laughs> they were like, if you're gonna make a whole thing out of it, we'll just have <laughs> yeah. a thing. That, that's where it came it from. Is, yeah. like, we're you gonna make a thing out of it. We're gonna make a thing out of this. <laughs> <laughs> whole fucking thing. I don't know why you got. Oh, that's where the thing? phrase comes from. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna make a thing with you. We're gonna. Oh, you're gonna we're make a thing with you. I'm gonna make a thing with you. All right. Well, I'll see you at the thing then. We're gonna we're gonna hold the thing. That's wonderful. So, instead of declaring Eric an outlaw, they banished him from the village. Now, being an outlaw in these times meant that you just kind of... They're like, you're not allowed in this village. You're also ba banished. But it's also not illegal for somebody to kill you if yep. you're an outlaw. Cool. cool. And it's kind of honorable. You know, you're out there viking and you know? Yeah. You're like, I'm gonna go fucking kill this guy, you know? And sometimes they would also do, like, duels. Yeah. And... It's why this system is not totally perfect, is because sometimes the bad guy would win mm. the duel, and they'd be like, well, Thor's on his side, so justice is served. <laughs> I feel like it's like John Wick, when all the yeah. assassins are after him. Yeah. Like, they had a thing, yeah. and then he became an outlaw. Yeah. John Wick. Grabs a it's handful a of pencils and goes to work. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole thing. <laughs> So he was actually lucky that he wasn't banished from Iceland as a whole, though. So what he did is he took his family and he moved uh, further north to an island called Oxney, which is not in southern England. So some people, when they see this, a more recognizable place that's Oxney is a place that's in Kent, which is south in England, the south of England. Okay. No. Uh, and actually, I saw several like documentaries on YouTube that were talking about it, and the map they showed put, like, the place in southern England, and it's like, no, he's still up. an island. Uh, was an it Iceland. inhabited? Was, was it just him and his family there? Or? Oh, yeah, it was inhabited, for sure. Okay. I mean, sparsely, but yeah, yeah, it was inhabited. It, it Basically, like, you know where Reykjavik is mm -hmm. on Iceland, right? There's that... There's, that little bay on the there's uh, west bay, coast. Yeah, and then there's another peninsula, and then past that peninsula north, there's another island sort of in the middle there. That's where he went. Mm. Oh, okay. And, there yeah. was, and he had enough neighbors, they live far enough apart to the point where you see him every once in a while, and you do the hand up, not moving wave. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. see, I'm see, here, you know. You, you kind of do that half nod when you pass him in your car. Yeah. Oh, no, no, you, the, it's the finger point. Instead of, you know, doing doing the full wave, you just do the finger point wave. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I see you. I see yeah. you. Yeah. You're like, I'm glad you live far enough away that I can play the music as loud as I want. Well, so Eric thought. 
Mm. Right? Yeah. As he was moving up there, he's bringing all of his shit with him, you know, and, you know, he has to build his house, and building the house takes time, you know, and it takes kind of a lot of people, and you have to kind of focus on it, because you need a house to stay in. Yeah, so, I should have got the Amish. <laughs> <laughs> he should have bought more premium currency, so he could speed up the countdown clock on building that house. Yeah, <laughs> like a mobile game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he asked a man named Thorgest to look after some ornately carved beams called Setstoker. And what these are, they're, they have, like, significance, you know, like, cultural significance. Yeah, I worked really hard on these families. beams. Can you keep well, an eye on them? Well, his father had brought them from Norway. Yeah. They oh. meant a lot to him. <laughs> these are my father's beams. Yeah, yeah. And they were his father before his beams. Yeah, and you put them up in your house, and they're ornately carved, and it's kind of your family's kind of heirloom type of thing. Right. And after he's done with this house, and actually some people even thought that they had, like, mystical protective properties. That's On account of the glowing. They do. Yeah, on account yeah. of the glowing. <laughs> yeah, it's made out of uranium. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really a problem until Eric finished his house, and he asked for the set stroker back. Now, Thorgest refused for one reason or another, so Eric stole them by force, and it's kind of unclear that the ones that Eric took back, like, were those actually his? Because, like, some people are like, no, he actually, in, you know, in the melee, kind of took Thorgest's uh, uh, <laughs> a, set stalkers. He never had beams Whoops. in the first yeah. place. And so, like, he's like, whatever, dude, I got, I got my beams he's back. He's like, hey, give me your beams that you stole. He's like, these are my beams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beam there, done that. Yeah. Yeah. So Thorgest, he gave chase. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing at the time. I know, I know. He gave chase, and in in the melee, Eric killed two of Thorgest's sons. With the beam? <laughs> with his axe or sword or whatever he had. Hit him with the beam. And, quote, this is what the sagas say, a few other men. Okay. Oh, cool. So he killed, he killed two of Thorgest's sons and a few other men. So it's like in... Like Red Dead Redemption, when you like kill a guy on the street on the road just for fun, mm -hmm. but somebody sees it, so you mm -hmm. gotta kill him. The next thing you know, you're fucking murdering. The yeah, whole you're town. killing like yeah everybody. It's, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, leave no witnesses. Yeah, duh, yeah. like Batman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so another thing was held, and this time Eric was banished from Iceland for three years. He killed several people, and they're like banished for three years. Well. Yeah. If you saw if you saw the way he killed all those people, you'd be like, oh, let's not push him too far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess he was just very persuasive. Like, he had a gift of persuasion. Yeah, like Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, if you uh, don't go easy on, on my crimes, I will murder you. Yeah. I got one more, and I'm going to save it for later, because rule of threes. <laughs> <laughs> so Eric, he, you know, he's looking around at where to go now, you know, what, what he's going to do. And so he had heard tales of explorers seeing a land to the west of Iceland. It was a harsh, unforgiving place, locked in ice. And the first people to see Greenland probably didn't see it at all, but actually saw an Arctic mirage Ooh. that was, like, over the horizon. Spooky. Um, yeah, it's... Well, no, they I saw actually, a ghost ship. Yeah, right. Uh, and it actually goes into, like, their legends of, like, Seeing ships upside down or seeing land upside down. Oh, like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. A, yeah, it's a mirage. That's what that is. That you see a lot in the Arctic, too. And actually, some say that you can stand on a tall mountain in Iceland, and on a clear day, you can see Greenland through the mirage. Really? Which is pretty cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. super sweet. And the yeah. best thing about the mirage is when they have, like, the lunch buffet... And the penny slots, mm -hmm. and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Sometimes they have a good show going on. You can see Blue Man Group or something. <laughs> <laughs> so with three years to kill, Eric took his family and set off for this mysterious land. <laughs> he's like, just kind of has to keep going north every time he murders a bunch yeah, of people. Yeah. Hey, you yeah. know what? If he's got three years to kill, he's probably going to kill him pretty fast. So. <laughs> yeah. I just can't help but think of the... Uh, who, who was it that saying go west? I think it was the village people. Not no, Pet Shop Boys. It was Pet Shop Boys. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I, I, I like to think that Pet Shop Boys was going through his head. Just oh, yeah. Go west. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking <laughs> Tom Waits. To do. Yeah. <laughs> going out west, Myrtle Wind Rose Tall. I feel like we've mentioned this before. Have we? In an episode. I Probably. feel like he mentioned the Pet Shop Boys song, and you and I mentioned the Tom Waits song. That could be true. <laughs> that would not surprise me. More, th- more than one of our stories involve characters going out west. Yeah. yeah. Like Five. It's like one of the... Like Five. exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's only four ways to go. Yeah. Inevitably one, and we'll be west. So, as he rounded the southern tip of Greenland, all of it's totally locked in ice. But he continued up the western coast of Greenland. It's like, maybe if I go further north, north there'll be less ice. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, he's, he's kind of trying to find, like, a place, you know, and he finally finds a place that's pretty decent. Like, there's some arable land, and he's like, you know, this, this isn't too bad. Do we know what time of year this was? I am. Uh, we August. don't really know, <laughs> but but if it's yeah, if it it's, can't be like the middle of winter. If he's able to land, yeah, yeah it's definitely sometime in the summer and for they, sure. And he's probably used to like the sun. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's uh, used to the midnight sun. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah, he knows exactly how that goes. Now, life in Iceland was rough, and it had been rough, but this place was no joke. Like this was worse. <laughs> uh, the only trees that grew were only really good for fuel. Uh, they were birch trees, but you you wouldn't want to make a house or a boat out of it. Uh, mm-hmm. it's Why not? Just, it's too weak. It's fucked up. It's too weak. It's not hard enough. Not and, hard enough wood. And, yeah. the, and the rest of the trees, he's like, oh, that's a tree. It's just covered in ice. Oh no, wait, it's just ice. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those ice trees. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. one of those big pieces of ice that's shaped like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> but there was enough fish to live off of as well as seal skins and the ivory from walrus tusks to trade and build an economy there. You know, so he's like, you know, he's being pretty optimistic about this new place and there's no neighbors. Sure. Yeah. You know, he plays music as loud as he wants. Yeah. <laughs> and bumping jams. But but after 3 years living there, he's like, I can't sustain a settlement here without more people. And considering my 3 years are up, I'm gonna go back to Iceland and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring some more people down here. Cause this place is is rad. Yeah. Be more rad with more people. And yeah. as much as I like bumping my music loud, half the equation is pissing off my neighbors. <laughs> yeah. I love he does love pissing his neighbors off. <laughs> that that's why does. that's why when the car alarm goes off, he just lets it go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> shoots off some bottle rockets. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not even Fourth of July, man. Stop shooting for fireworks. Well, the thing about this, though, that, that was different about Iceland is that he kind of got the best land already. He didn't have to compete with anybody, and like you had to do in Iceland. And he can he, make up his own rules. Yeah, he gets to be chief. And yeah, that's straight up like, there's not all these He's rules like, in Greece. I had an old thing before you guys got here. I already, I got the I rules. I decided the rules. I'm the chief. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Outback Steakhouse, where there's no rules, and it's just yeah. right. <laughs> I get to play my music as loud as I want. Yeah. And we're going to have so many Bloomin' Onions. And I, I will drop yeah. a mountain on you if, if you have a problem with that. Yeah. Done it yeah. before. Yeah. Don't test my powers. <laughs> <laughs> so he got back, and he told the Icelanders... Of a land that was a lush paradise. Yes. Yeah. It was full of farmland, completely uninhabited, where a guy could be free and the joys shall never end. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> and everyone was like, Are you sure, dude? And he was like, I discovered it. I called it Greenland for a reason. Yeah, because yeah. it's dope. <laughs> I call it Greenland, dude. And yeah. they're like, well, he's calling it Greenland. He's like, what's it? What's in a name? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, if you thought that place is great, he should check out Antarctica. Yeah, right. So, or as I like to call it, Goldland, yeah. <laughs> Tittyville. Yeah. So the whole reason, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's so stupid. Yeah. Or, or Dickville, if you're into that sort of thing, which is totally cool. Yeah, there's dicks too. It's all pussies and dicks. It's just pussies and dicks, guys. It's a big old fuck fest up there. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, people wonder like why is Iceland Iceland? Why is Greenland Greenland? It's this. Eric the Red named it Greenland to try to get people to Because Eric down the Red's there. a dick. Yeah. And the guy called it Iceland because once one winter really pissed him off. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Like that's really it. That's the only reason why they're called what they're called. Yeah. And that's the story of Greenland and Iceland. Love <laughs> you bye. And, and they <laughs> lived happily ever after. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to the Icelanders' ears, 
It would have been a compelling argument, seeing as Iceland was quickly starting to fill up and most of the best arable land was already taken. These guys love to fuck. <laughs> I mean, that's probably... They didn't the call it Dixville for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with that, he gathered up his new colonists and he struck out to go colonize Greenland. Yeah. And those that survived the trip, because it's a treacherous <laughs> trip, were pretty pissed off by the time they got there. <laughs> like, Greenland, huh? This place better be real fucking green, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that guy sounds like he's on coke. <laughs> you said we were going to start he's a like, band, man. He's like, I've seen enough snow, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I brought my own snow. <laughs> yeah, life was hard in Greenland, and, and many essential material goods had to be shipped in. I thought you were going to say essential workers. <laughs> they had to keep working even though the virus was uh, killing right. everybody. Right. Uh, sometimes boats were bought outright from Norway and sent to them instead of being built because, again, they don't have the resources to do so. Uh, they would have to ship in a lot of you stuff. You can't make boats out of those snow trees. No. <laughs> uh, they melt as soon as you get to Bermuda, Bahama, and all of the rest of them for you. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I got halfway to Kokomo, my boat melted. <laughs> it was so good to laugh again. Oh, oh Jesus. I am hungover. Oh. <laughs> okay. So at one point, a man named Bjarni Hurjolfsson was traveling from Norway to Iceland to visit his family there. But when he arrived in Iceland, he was informed that his family had left with Eric the Red to go settle Greenland. Oh. So Bjarni set sail for Greenland. But he was blown off course. Oh, jeez. And he got lost. <laughs> It'd be better at navigating if they weren't drunk all the time. <laughs> right? Well, and using birds to, you know. Oh, yeah. oh, none of them came back. You're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Means there's land everywhere. <laughs> well, and if or they died. Or if their died. navigators weren't getting their dick sucked all the time. <laughs> yeah. Getting blown off course, if you know what I mean. Ooh. Oh, okay. My it's second like, oral sex joke in this like, episode. It's like yeah. Roadhead when you accidentally, you know, crush your car into a tree. Yeah. Yeah. She bites it clean off. <laughs> uh, a regular Lorena Bobbitt uh, yeah. situation. Yeah. That's where my mind went to. Thank you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So when Bjarni spotted land, he was like, you know, this is... I was told there was a lot more ice. This is not ice-locked. It's full of trees. And his family's not there. <laughs> <laughs> and, his, and like his crew's like, we should get off and, like, you know, we, we should go explore this area. And they begged him to do so. And he's like, no, let's... Let's turn around. Yeah. Let's let's get to Greenland. You know. Yeah, let's this, turn this, around. This place is way too dope. Yeah. Yeah. They did. They made it to Kokomo. Yeah. <laughs> which is so, in the middle of the Arctic Circle. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, let's go, and everyone else is like, no, we could do things fast, or we could just take it slow. <laughs> <laughs> so he he turned around and he went back to Greenland, but that means that Bjarni and his crew were the first Europeans to ever set eyes on the North American continent. There it is. Yeah. We That's did cool. it. Was there tons of cod? There's a lot of cod in those waters, yes. What, what about the people who crossed the, uh, what is it, the Bering Strait? First Europeans. I know, but they were technically European from a long no, ways ago. No, they weren't. They would have no. gone through. You're right. They weren't European at all. We're all, we're all one. Yeah. Sounds like Chris <laughs> needs to get his bearings straight. Nice. <laughs> hey. ah. That's why I'm saying, like, no one discovered North America. Technically, well, it was the the people that came over the Bering Strait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the people that s discovered North America, yeah. whether they knew it or not. The white people don't think that counts. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, that's just not true. Uh, and Eric, or these people, these Norsemen didn't discover North America. They were just the first Europeans. Yeah. To ever get there. They're like, oops, uh, this is not our exit. We need to do a U-turn. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what Bjarni that did. That sucks when there's not another exit for a while. That's what <sighs> happened. Yeah. And then you're in North America. And you're supposed yeah. to be in Greenland. Ugh. Yeah, the last exit was in Greenland, and I missed that. <laughs> I went all the way to Newfoundland. Yeah. So growing up in Greenland, Leif Erikson would have learned everything from his father. How to build boats, houses, sea navigation skills... Uh, from taking frequent trips uh, with trade goods to Iceland. 
Uh, and of course, how to be a brave Viking. Yeah, taught him right. all about fog hat. How to <laughs> got him lifting about two thirty. Yeah, you know when he was twelve. Yeah, uh, but it's got a forty five pound bar, so like you know he's yeah. he's putting it up. Yeah, right. I mean he's twelve, but oh, he has a full beard. Yeah. yeah. Also, going going to Iceland taught Leaf what leaves look like. <laughs> it's, it's like that's what I was named after. Well, Spelled it could different. Al- well, it could also be life. Okay. Well. Right. I'm gonna go with leaf. Just it's just easier for me. Vita Ericsson. Yeah, I get it. I, yeah, like like the PlayStation console. Yeah, because Vita means life. <laughs> the Vita <Yes>. Ericsson. <laughs> <laughs> but Leaf was less hot-headed than his father. He was more amiable, likable, and personal. He was a personable. Cool guy. Yeah. Sounds like most people are. Uh, people liked him. Less hot-headed than Eric Durant. <laughs> yeah, he killed several people. <laughs> you know? He caused an avalanche on somebody's house. <laughs> his thralls did. Accidentally, quote yeah. unquote. Accidentally, yeah. Accidentally, pulling up those tree stumps, throwing them in the river. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he must have inherited his father's persuasiveness, because he became a, a leader amongst the Greenlanders, and people chose to follow him and go with him, rather than follow him out of fear, like Eric. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was just people never. I know, but people <laughs> never really followed Eric out of fear. I I like to think that uh, Leaf uh, was. <laughs> Just packing a big old hog, and yeah. people respected that, and they're just like, you know what? He's the leader. He I would, follow him. He would urinate yeah. in public frequently, like on the side of, uh, I don't know, a chunk of ice, or mm-hmm. a different looking chunk of ice, and they were like, it's cold out, and I can respect what's going on here. Yeah. No. He's just wearing two skins, instead yeah. of like 12. Like what The I'm normal doing. 12 that everyone else is wearing. Yeah. Taking his dick out. <laughs> <laughs> so for one reason or another... Leif set out for Norway. Now, this trip wasn't easy, and it, it never is an easy trip. But they passed Iceland thinking that, eh, we got enough supplies to make it to Norway. It's not that much further. And they waved at it. Yeah, pretty much. Kept yeah, they're like, shouldn't we stop here? And he's like, bah. <laughs> they gave it the finger. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Iceland! Uh, but turns out, though, the winds pushed them back from Norway. Fuck. And actually forced them to stop at the Hebrides, which which is an archipelago off the western coast of modern day Scotland. Ah. Oh, cool! Yeah, get some haggis. There you go. During his stay here, Leif became involved with a, a Norse noblewoman named Thor Gunna. And like everybody's Thor something. Uh, well, it's it's Thor. You know, yeah. they, they love He's Thor. Cool. Yeah, I've and seen Thor Ragnarok. It's yeah, pretty good. He's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> and Leif knocked her up. Nice. As but you do. Like, but he was only there for a couple of months, so he left. Yeah, fuck this. I mean, they were married. They were married. Well, she wouldn't have done it without, out of wedlock. That's a Christian thing. I was joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get hitched, rog dog it, and bounce. I don't think he knew that she was knocked up, and he just left. They were married, and they never saw each other ever again, but he was married. You know, they banged a couple of times, and he was like, so... Uh, Norway. Turns right. out you suck. Uh, Norway it is. Uh, uh, Went out was, to get cigarettes. I wrote a bunch of history yeah. inside of your uterus, and now I must go. And she's <laughs> like, we don't know how pregnancy works yet. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just glad that it wasn't like, I seem that you've been gaining weight. All right, later. I'm going out. to Norway. <laughs> yeah, going out, like you said, going out for a pack of smokes. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> like Batman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Batman did with his wife. Yeah. So Leif's son, Thorgils, eventually reunited with his father much later in Greenland. And it feels so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although he was nowhere near as popular as his father, a lot of people just did not like old Thorgils. No. Just mm-hmm. didn't like him. Thorgils. We don't really know why, but people didn't like him. I mean, only, was... o- only child, probably spoiled, rotten. <laughs> He's fucking annoying. You know these guys. My yeah. dad did this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's like always bragging about like stuff his dad did. And I'm like, you didn't do these things. What yeah. are you bragging about? You know, Thor girl, like, uh, Gil- Gil's kept saying that he had a girlfriend in Greenland. Yeah. <laughs> that, that she went to camp. <laughs> he, he drove a really big truck that his dad bought him and he bragged about it all the yeah. time. He owns a dealership. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my dad totally owns a dealership. Yeah. So when Leif arrived in Norway in 999 CE, King Olaf Turgvison gave Leif the honorary title of herdman and invited him to stay in his court through the winter, which would have been a great honor for Leif. Cool. Sick. 
But there was a lot of, uh, you know, orgies. Probably not. Old not man. King Olaf's court. Not, not a King Olaf's court. No. Because King Olaf was the first Christian king. Oh. Rude. Yeah, and... None of these court orgies in my, in my fucking court. Yeah. My courts are all about sitting around in a circle playing acoustic guitar. Yeah. Talking about <laughs> JC and all the things he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, covered in tattoos. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, Leaf was honored, but he missed the old days of the all male orgies. Yeah, yeah, I would too. The all yeah. labs of beef slapped against each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. So it was here. It was. It was during this winter that Leaf was also converted to Christianity, mm-hmm. and so King Olaf gave him a mission to return to Greenland and. Spread his newfound yeah, spread faith. Spread the good word. Yeah, yeah. they got to yeah, hear about Jesus news. and um, yeah. right. How they uh, got to cut the, out the orgies and it's like, dude, he's ringing doorbells. <laughs> these gay orgies have got to stop. JC told me. Yeah, like, I know they Fuck. feel great. I know that we all believe that it's what's on the inside that counts. <sighs> well, what's on the well? What's on the inside of your soul? They're That's like, oh, I thought it was what what was on the inside of what I find. With my probe. Yeah, my probe. Yeah, my well, f- flesh probe. Yeah. Well, they. Well, <laughs> They were like, what's a soul? You know, they didn't know. What the fuck's a soul? Right. Right. And philosophy was born. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no, that, that's so crazy, though, that he... So, Leif meets the first Christian king in Norway. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to assume that during this time, they're still doing uh, renovations by, like, changing the signs yep. on every single... Yeah. Uh, like, Be- old stave church. Yeah, because before this, uh, before King Olaf... The Norse traders were like, dude, this is hurting business not being Christian. So what they would do is they would like, like as they pulled up to a town, like in one of their longboats, right? They're like, okay, take off your Thor neck, your your Thor necklace, and put on the cross necklace, <laughs> right? And that way they'll think we're Christians, yeah, and we can trade with them and actually sell at good prices. And then when we get home, we'll just put the Thor necklace back back on. And yeah. it was kind of that way for a long time. Bro, like, sure. JC's dope, evolution's bullshit, uh, <laughs> buy, our, buy our walrus tusks. Yeah. yeah. And they're like... <laughs> they're blessed by the Jeebus. It's like, <laughs> walruses did not evolve yeah. from anything. Yeah. Well, yeah. Welcome to my shop. I'm I'm Bjorn Thor... I mean, <laughs> Bjorn Jesuson. <laughs> <laughs> Bjorn means bear. Did you know that? I did, yes. What does Bjork mean? That's Icelandic. I don't fucking know any Icelandic. Smaller bear. It means uh, Quir- chick- qu- quirky Icelandic singer yeah, lady. Chick that mm. makes cool music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when Leif made it back to Greenland, he began proselytizing his new faith with some degree of luck. Many converted, including Leif's mother, Thjorhild, who would who would now wanted a full church built right next to her and Lee, uh, Eric's house. Well, they don't want to go a long way to church on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Well, Eric the Red, he was not happy about this because Eric was Points a lifelong party. pagan. Yeah. Right. It's gonna get in the way of playing his music loud. <laughs> fucking... Well, and he, he had attributed all of his successes in life to these North gods, and there's yeah. no way he was gonna be like, yeah, fuck the Norse gods. It's like, it's these Jesus, guys are no. way cooler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, and, you know... Plus, you Jesus doesn't like murder. Like that. That's, like, his main thing. You wouldn't know that nowadays, would you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but... I'm aware of the irony. I've been... Have, <laughs> have been my whole life. Mm-hmm. But when Thjorhild refused to have sex with him unless he did build the church, Eric agreed to build the church. <laughs> yeah. You see, that's when he should have got a new wife. Well... He's probably getting up there. That's a lot of work. He's getting up in age. Mm, true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Fuck. And you know her nagging. It would just go on and like, <laughs> on and on. That's why I spent so much time at the bar. <laughs> and, <laughs> anytime That's I why see... That's so red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Leif, after, you know, he's been in Greenland for a time, and not... The, the sagas don't agree on how any of this went, but after hearing the stories that Bjarni Herjolfsson had told him about this mysterious place to the west full of trees... Which they need trees, right? He decided to go check it out. So he even bought Bjarni's boat, and even a couple of his crew guys came with him. Cool. Because nice. they were like, I still want to check that place They're out. Like, What's you know? a tree? <laughs> <laughs> it's like ice that never melts. Yeah. Uh, oh, Imagine, oh, oh <laughs> actually, sorry. Actually, most of the homes, Viking homes built in Greenland, were actually built out of stone. 
because mm. they just didn't have the wood to yeah. do so. Just like it. Try it's building a boat out of that. <laughs> <laughs> out of rocks. Yeah, you can't do it. Straight to the bottom. No. <laughs> <laughs> Does not even make it halfway to Kokomo? No. <laughs> Throw it hard enough, it might skip a couple pieces. But that's about it. So Eric the Red was... He was actually supposed to go with Leaf on this trip, which would have changed history forever because Eric the Red would have taken the credit for for the discovery. Uh, he certainly would have told people that. Yeah, and it will have it would have relegated Leif Erikson to a minor role in history. You know, we would not know his name right. to this day if Eric the Red would have gone with him. But it wasn't to be. Eric fell from his horse and injured his leg. Decided not to go. And it actually wasn't a very serious injury. Yeah, it was like, ooh, my leg. Ooh, owie, 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 owie. Well, he, yeah, he still could have gone, but... He's like, he, my stomach. <laughs> but it was a bad omen. Yeah, he's like Mr. Satan. Yeah, it was a bad omen, and they took omens seriously, so he stayed. He's like, yeah. I don't want to curse the trip. You like, know? Thor's already pissed about your Jesus <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right? I'm not risking it further. Yeah, yeah. All this Jesus shit's really pissing Thor off. I'm definitely <laughs> yeah. not going now. Jesus... Did have a hammer, but it was for building tables. <laughs> <laughs> I can't summon lightning bolts, but I can build this table lightning fast. Oh, watch me. So about in the year 1000 CE, Leif Erikson set out to find the place that Bjarni had spoken of. The first island he found was a place with a lot of flat stones, so he called it Heluland, or... Flat stone land. Yeah. These guys are clever. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, they yeah. could really uh, Very get away people. with words. Yeah. <laughs> Iceland, Greenland, flat stone land. <laughs> uh, Newfoundland. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get to kind of that a little bit, too. <laughs> I, I just love, yeah, it's... Their imagination knows no bounds. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and when they weren't naming things just after the first thing they saw, they just named it after themselves. Yeah. Like, all the settlements in Greenland were named after Eric the Red. Thortown, Thortown 2, Thortown 3. <laughs> Eric's it was Town up, 6. It was straight up like Eric's Town. <laughs> er, <laughs> you know? er, Eric's Town 1. <laughs> <Yeah. it's a laughs> mess. We're going to build a highway. It'll be fine. It's like save files on SimCity yeah. that you don't care about. Yeah. It's like <laughs> Shitsville. <laughs> Shitsville. I'm pretty put down. <laughs> I think I've named towns both of those things. Oh, yeah. I've definitely named a place Shitsville. <laughs> put down. Shitsville, USA. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't stay in flat, flat stone land for a while. <laughs> they, they, they kept going. And they saw another densely wooded island, which is probably modern-day Labrador, off the coast of Canada. And they called it Markland, or Woodland. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So they found wood. They continued south to probably, and this is debatable, but probably modern-day northern Newfoundland, where they found plentiful game and, you know, wood and timber... But more importantly, wine grapes. Ah, oh, now they can continue the sport. Finally. Yeah. Now, now. What did they do? What did they do to deserve this sober existence? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they most certainly made booze out of it. The thing is, grapes are not native to that area, and the Norsemen would have called almost everything grapes. <laughs> any, almost anything that they could have like made booze in. They would they would have called it grapes. They've been making booze out of rocks. <laughs> That's gonna <laughs> say. You, we got the you know that wine that comes from those really hard grapes that you find on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know the grapes from Flatstone Place. <laughs> flat grape, flat grape place. Yeah. yeah. Well, it it could have been blackberries. It could have been currants. It could have been a lot of different things. Uh, they made some cider. They mm. called it. They called it grapes anyway. Um, and that's how they invented Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. There you go. <laughs> They also they also spent a winter there, and it was way less harsh. And they're like, this place is kind of dope. The winter is way not as bad as it is in Iceland or Greenland. <laughs> I like how the winters in Greenland are so bad, they go to northern Newfoundland, and they're like, they're like this, this is paradise. downright balmy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, only, it's only 20 below here. This yeah. is great. <laughs> yeah. Still shorts weather. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, they they dubbed it, dubbed it Vinland or Wineland. I like yeah. that. Uh -huh. And... Uh, they packed up their shit, they got buckets full of grapes, or whatever it was, and timber, 
and they went back to Greenland as victorious heroes. Cool. They, they all ran up to the shore, and they were like, we got wine, and one impatient dude in the back's like, we got grape juice! <laughs> 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 and his name was Fjard Welches. Yeah. <laughs> Welches son. Welches son. Yeah. I want that purple drink. <laughs> Upon his arrival, however, Leif learned that his father, Eric the Red, had died of the plague that had just reached Greenland. Ah, ah COVID-19. Yeah. yeah. yeah this it, was it's more like a COVID-6. <laughs> this is like legit plague. You know, cool. The plague. Yeah. Bubonic. Yeah. yeah. It like, and it was hitting rats. real late in Greenland by this time. You mm. know, one of the last places it would ever hit. Sure. So, COVID-6, Oklahoma 9. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, hot, but not in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, almost the second he got there, Leaf was looked upon now to become the new settlement's chief. You know, like... They're like, your dad's dead. I guess it's up to you. And he was like, okay. And he like took up the mantle to like what, lead the settlement. What was that funeral like? Was it like uh, a lot of the Valhalla shenanigans? Well, yeah. Okay. So the thing is, is Eric was buried in a burial place along with Christian burials, but his burial was clear that it was a Viking burial. So it was way cooler. It, it buried with swords and shit, you know. Fuck yeah. Way cooler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was just buried close to the rest of the Christian converts. What he must have believed, you know, the Norse had a lot of different beliefs as far as the afterlife went. There was no real concise thing, but there was Valhalla that was reserved for those who had died in battle. Mm -hmm. Right. And there was Asgard, which is just the general place you go, you know, Otherwise, Yeah, you right? don't get to go out to the sweet yeah. party house that's Valhalla. No, no, and there was also an underworld called Hell. Yeah. That was from a goddess of the same name. Her name was Hell. Cool. And you would... It wasn't necessarily a bad place. You know, it was just a general afterlife place. Just a different kind of party. Yeah, yeah and... Probably uh, similar to like... It was the Christians that, that applied yeah. the word Hell, underground, place of burning damnation... Much later, but they took it from this. I do like the fact that Eric the Red was buried in the vicinity of Christian burials, so even in death, he was pissing off his neighbors. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> yeah. So Leif, he would never go back to Vinland. He would never do any more, any, anything like that to the West. He would never do that again. But he still stands as the European that is the first European to find North America. That's cool. Crazy. That's so, that's why he exists to us today. But it's crazy that it wasn't him, like, essentially popping the cork on a million people from, from Greenland constantly going there well, and, like, pillaging. Well, the thing is, is that they never went there for the express purpose of colonization. Unlike Christopher Columbus. Yeah. When right. Christopher Columbus came to the New World, he went there with the expressed purpose of colonization. Not so with Leif Erikson. And Leif Erikson never saw the native people. Mm -hmm. Not once. However, Leif's brother, Thorvald, he decided, well, I'm not chieftain, like my brother Leif. I'm gonna go to Vinland. I can go and do whatever I want. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. So... And he wanted to be, you know, famous like his brother. You know? Sure. So Leif gave his brother everything he would need. You know, the boats, the know-how. He's like, this is, this is what you have to know about finding my settlement that I built and left there. You can still find it. It's right here. Plus he gets rid of his brother that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, asking the, for, you know, his turn to play the video game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm tired of playing Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> the, the controller's not even plugged in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I tried that on my brother one time, and it did not work. <laughs> I would so imagine smart. that you'd smart. have to be pretty dumb to fall for that. <laughs> you would have to be. He did not. <laughs> so at first, everything with Thor Thorvald's expedition went really well. They easily found Leif Erikson's settlement, and they fished like the whole winter. 
Like, this place is dope. Yeah, that know? sounds like the life right there. Got some of that yeah. mahi mahi. Not out there. Mahi mahi. Cod. <laughs> Lots of cod. Yeah. 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 Cape White cod. Fish. Yeah. There you go. There now, you if go. they had any crab pots going, Ooh. maybe get some of those lobsters. Ooh. Yeah, get a low country very boil s- going. Very small lobsters at yeah. this point mm. in time. Delicious. Yeah. Poor people food. However, as they explored the area, they found something that gave everyone pause. It was kind of ominous. It was a house. And further down the beach, there were canoes. And they're like, Oh shit! Seven Eleven. Someone's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like there's <laughs> other people here that we don't know. You know. Right. How they beat us here so fast? <laughs> <laughs> the Native Americans slowly came out of their hiding places, and they tried to communicate with the Norsemen, but it didn't go well I would at all. Imagine, and I'm just yeah. guessing, they didn't speak the same language. Yeah, and their and their languages had no root language. It's not like they some had like nothing in common. Sci-fi shows where for some reason aliens speak English yeah. already. No. It's called basic. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, they've been watching the honeymooners on TV from space for years. <laughs> 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 it's like why does he keep saying to the moon? <laughs> you know. <laughs> So you got two people from different parts of the world with completely different cultural, like, uh, I guess, heritages. Yeah. And uh, and from one group's perspective, a bunch of dudes who don't look like all their buddies just showed up and started yelling at them. Well, and they're wearing full armor, and they have, like, these swords and stuff. You've never seen anything like this, because they are still a Stone Age culture. Yeah. Right. Whereas they're Iron Age. It's all very confusing to them. I mean, could you imagine? It'd be like meeting an alien. Yeah. You know? So, of course, inevitably, violence broke out. And Thorvald's men, uh, they killed eight of the natives. And one of them got away. And we are still totally unsure what the natives called themselves. In this time, these particular natives called themselves. Some say that they're like proto Algonquin. But what the Norse called them were scraylings. And that could mean for the leather that they made the canoes and their clothes out of, or it could also mean those who scream a lot. Uh, yeah, it was, because it was it's like, like their war cry. It's based you know? off the noise they kept making. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so soon the Nor- Norsemen heard a battle cry that shook them to their bones. And it was a hundred, you know, just hundreds of these native warriors descending upon them. You know, with bows and arrows and stuff. And, like, they retreat back to their ship, and they're, like, putting up their shields and stuff. And, like, they have superior weapons and armor, but they have numbers. Like, yeah. the Native Americans have numbers. And, like, they're they're taking kind of light casualties and wound, wounded and things like that. But one arrow strikes Thorvald in the chest and kills him. Mm-hmm. Death blow. Yeah. And Sick. so... His crew, after, like, the attack was done, was like, all right, let's wrap this up. <laughs> and they went back to Greenland, totally dejected. Yeah, like, I'm thinking of... Uh, hey, hey, Le- Le- hey, Leaf. Um, hey, so, like, uh, you know, uh, the wood, the grapes, totally found them. It was great, but, hey, how come you didn't tell us about all the guys with bows? <laughs> You're like, guys with bows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't see those guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, they killed the shit out of us, so... Yeah. Now, it is believed that on this trip, could have been a different one, but one of the stories goes that it was on this trip that there was a woman who accompanied them. Her name was Gudrid, and I, oh boy, I'm going to try my best. Gudrid Thorbjarnar Dotcher. So she was the first person from Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she invented <laughs> cheese curds, correct? Yeah. Well, she gave birth to a son. Cool. Named Snorri <laughs> Thorfinson. Because he's sleepy. Yeah. He when was he invented re- before the time of sleep apnea machines. That's <laughs> <laughs> all Snorri. Th- this made Snorri the first European born in North America. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. He went on to do a bunch of other stuff, too. Like sleep. <laughs> it's like the first child born in uh, Antarctica, which Teamish yeah. friend requested on Facebook. Is that true? Yeah. That's great. Cool. <laughs> did, did, he get, did he get a response? No. But too much looked it up and found him on Facebook and friend requested him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> Such a too much thing to do. That's so good. So Leaf's other brother, Thorstein, 
he tried to go to Vinland, but was totally unsuccessful due to bad weather. It just kind of blew him back. And when he got back to Greenland, he got sick with the plague and died. <laughs> ah. Whoops. How was your trip? Blew me away. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> and then he died. Yeah. It's like... Uh, you're one place where all the natives are killing you, and you go home only to be killed by the plague. Yeah. I would have gone to Kokomo. <laughs> but this ship would have melted. Yeah. However, Leaf's half-sister, or probably half-sister, Freydis, she really wanted to go to Finland. And she wheeled and dealed with some Norwegian sailors and pretty much forced her husband to go on a voyage to Finland. Uh, yeah, I want to get murdered. <laughs> for, you know. I want to go shake the hands of the guys who kicked my brother's ass. <laughs> yeah. Make me be Luigi all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so they too found Leaf's settlement pretty easily. In the summertime, they actually traded with the natives. Mm. You know, uh, the natives traded leathers and furs to them, and the Norse traded milk, cheese, and dairy products. With mm. And buckets of rocks, or as they like to, would co- as they like to call them, eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Please cut around that to make it sound like I'm more eloquent. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> but even still, like, everyone was still on guard. And what comes next is kind of conjecture. Now, maybe the natives had an adverse reaction to the dairy products uh, yeah. that they didn't Ship themselves. Have. Should have yeah. traded some lactate. Yeah, they didn't have any of these products, so when they had it, they had an adverse reaction to it. Dairyzi. Yes, yeah. exactly. And they thought it was cursed or poisoned or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was because they wanted to trade for those fancy iron weapons. Because that at first they were like, I'll trade you for that sword you got there. And, like, fuck and they're that. like, no, no, no. some cheese. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my sword. Yeah. Here's some ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good, but you will shit yourself. <laughs> yeah. Or it could have been a misunderstanding with one native reaching to pick up a weapon that was on the ground. Like, there was an axe on the ground, and he was going to pick it up, and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's got an axe! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Either way... Violence broke out again. The the natives attacking the Norsemen. And the men retreated, taking up their defensive p- uh, positions. As the natives pushed the Norse uh, settlers back, and they're kind of getting into their settlement, one of the Norse bulls broke out of its pen and started, like, charging the natives. They'd never seen a bull before. <laughs> this must have been horrifying to, to see. <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, and so they were terrified from the bull, and, and they ran away from it. Uh, like, the fuck is this thing? They got one of those yeah. fast buffaloes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's no buffaloes up where we're talking. I know. So they retreated for that reason, but they probably retreated for another reason. And that was because of Freydis. Now, Freydis, when she came out and she saw the battle happening and she saw these brave Viking warriors retreating, she called them all cowards. And she picked up a sword and screamed at them like, fuck you, you're cowards. She tore off her top. She's nice. eight months pregnant, by the way. Fucking fuck yeah. She tore off her top, took a, the sword she found off the ground and started screaming at the natives and taking the sword and slapping her tit with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they ran shit. away. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. They ran awesome. away from her. I would run away from that, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like, that is that is a woman I do not want to I don't uh, want to fuck with. with that lady. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my wife's six months pregnant, and I do that all the time when she <laughs> screams at me, and she doesn't even have to slap the sword. She just has to brandish it, and I run. <laughs> she brandishes it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she's got the sword again. Ah, oh, shit. Where'd it, she even get that thing? Uh, it, it was a catalog thing. It's a katana blade. It's a whole skymall. <laughs> yeah. The, the yeah. skymall. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude, that's just so badass. I can't help that's pretty but... pretty dope. Yeah. She's eight months pregnant, and she's doing this. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously, talk about hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, like... She wasn't even scorned. Uh, she, she was just like, scorned. what a bunch of cowards. She yeah. was scorned by their uh, cowardice. Yeah. yeah. Look at look at you little bitch boys over there. <laughs> now, granted, 
This story was written 250 years after it happened in the sagas, and it was written by, you know, Christian monks. And there's a <laughs> small possibility, well, I wouldn't say small, there's a big possibility that... The sword was a scythe? No. That it was made up because she was pagan her whole life, and they were trying to depict her as most savage as possible. I like how that tearing the top off. See, yeah. it seemed yeah. superfluous. Yes. Yeah. I, I just uh, and we, screaming like that, being unwomanly. A brother we, we've Emmanuel. talked about this before, and yeah. what I love is like, oh, it, yeah. it, it always backfires, and it just yeah. makes them look so fucking to cool modern, and to badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but like, not, not to them. Not it's like Boudica. We're like, yeah, she's Boudica. dope as shit. Yeah. No, I just I think the the, the the monks the monks were like Brother Emmanuel. You, when you were writing this uh, tale, um, were you doing this for erotic reasons? Is this the first erotic <laughs> fan fiction? And he's like, Oh no, it's because she's so savage. My erection is unrelated. Yeah, I gotta uh, jerk off to something. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> uh, I have to cover my lap with this copy of the sagas now because mm -hmm. uh, I have to go somewhere. Yeah, and uh, you know, he was jacking off. Well, the sagas scold her. Kind of. They scold her for doing that. And it's like, really? Being way <laughs> too on, cool. dude. It worked. You're being way too cool. And, yeah. and cre creating... You're like Eric the Red being badass in his garage, pissing off his neighbors, honking <laughs> the horn in the middle of the night. Yeah. Creating pregnancy fetish porn. <laughs> <laughs> so after that attack, they packed up and went back to Greenland. But, Freydis wasn't done. She again forced her husband to fund another trip, this time with some Icelandic sailors. The trip, this time, got off to a rocky start. Mm -hmm. Freydis kind of tried to cheat him with crew costs, and when they did get to Vinland, she was she got really pissed off that the Icelanders were staying in Leif's cabin, which is <laughs> supposed to be hers. Right. That's my fucking cabin. Yeah, it's my cabin. She sounds, um, she's so cool, first yeah. of all. Uh, if I know her personally... I feel that she would be insufferable. She uh, was an assertive, uh, self-actualized leader. Yeah, yeah and, she uh, she was yeah. probably she was probably pretty pretty mean to me. That's around. what I mean. Yeah. Well, yeah. she had to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Had to be oh, yeah. Otherwise, those men wouldn't listen. You have to be exactly. now. Well, fault. again, again, not weird for women to do these kind of things yeah. for the Norse people. Not weird for women to do a lot of things unless we're talking about the Romans. Mm -hmm. And the Romans have really seeped into every aspect of European and, by extension, American culture. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so to this day, there's still that sort of, you know, the feminism exists for a reason. Yeah, for you sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Uh, not so in nearly every other culture. If Just, it wasn't for the Romans, we wouldn't even need feminism because there wouldn't be a, there wouldn't be a reason for it. So, thanks a lot, ancient Rome, for your aqueducts and your fucking misogyny. It's like, <laughs> what did the Romans ever give to us? Roads, aqueducts. Well, of course, the roads. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, every time like they dig up burial sites, they're like, oh, these are definitely warriors because of what they're buried with. Like sometimes they're buried with like entire chariots, like horses, teams of horses. Weapons. This, this bag of cats. And a lot of the time, it's women. Dude, what was super cool that uh, I learned when I was at the uh, Viking Boat Museum in Oslo, they discovered like three fucking boats that were buried mm -hmm. with these ladies, and they think that they were like badass Viking queens. Like they were like yeah. Viking royalty. Like Viking and they were like Boudicca. so fucking cool yeah. that they got to be buried inside of a fucking boat. With all their shit, like that's yeah. so fucking badass. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. They got the the full honors. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's so cool. Yeah, no, it's arche ar archaeological evidence proves this to be true. Dope. That women are better than men. That they they took part in all the same things. Yeah. What's cooler than a badass chick? They mature faster. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, what's cooler than than a badass chick? A bunch of badass chicks. Yes, okay. uh, Amazonians. The Amazonian warriors, for sure. Yeah. They'll well. make cucks out of us all. That's fine. <sighs> yeah. So, after, like, these things, like, they got on each other's nerves, like, the entire winter. 
and they were like <laughs> like doing like small things to each other, like to piss each other off. Really pushing each other's buttons. And it's the winter, so you gotta be around these people. You yeah. know? And did they bring back the sport and just started insulting each other, but it wasn't very sportsmanlike? <laughs> it well, started out sportsmanlike, but then it cut real deep. Yeah. Well, Freda, Freda's told her husband that one of these Icelanders had hit her. <laughs> like, we don't really know, like, what she did, but she manufactured something. She, like, hit herself in the head or something, oh. mm. and then said, we need to go take vengeance on these guys. So in, like, the middle of the night, the guys, like, suited up and went over and, and killed them. Killed the Icelandic sailors they were with. And they were like, okay, but Freitas, uh, we're not going to kill the women, though. The women that they brought with them, we're not going to do that. And Freitas is like, you're not? Give me the axe, then. Ooh. And they're like, okay. And then she and started she jamming on it. Fuck. She did it herself. <laughs> well, and you know that she was fucking... Soaking wet when she was doing it too. <laughs> with blood. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> she killed. How, I don't know how many people. And know? for some reason, with an axe. That night reminded of her. Of uh, it reminded her of her first night at Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that too. So they bribed the men. And they're like, now you're not gonna tell anyone about this. You know, and we're gonna go back to Greenland. You're gonna say everything's hunky dory, and these guys died from I don't know natives or some shit. You know, but you're, we're not going to say about how we murdered all these people. But well, of course, she's chomping down on, on a cigar. Yeah. I'll say. <laughs> like, yeah. You're not going to say nothing about how I murdered these guys, you yeah. say? Yeah. They died from bonitis. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, the story got out, as stories do. That's why we're talking about it now. That's, and how, that's why yeah. we have the that's movie, we know. I Know What You Did Last Summer. <laughs> it's about this. Yeah. This was the last trip to Vinland. The last one. And no one really ever tried to colonize it. It was too far away for what they got in return for going there. Like, okay, so you go all the way down here. It's treacherous. It's hard to get to. You go all the way down there and you get trees and grapes. Or whatever the grapes are. And the natives kill you. And the natives kill you. And there's way more of them than there are of us. And the fact that the only people that are trying this are Greenlanders... So what? We want to do a colony of a colony? We just don't have the numbers to do that. Right, like, yeah. to actually make a sustainable settlement. You know, so they, they're they like, yeah, it's too far, it's too much trouble. Startups having startups. <laughs> that, and and they're, they're getting plague, you know what I mean? So it's ravaging their numbers. And they're starting to look around and be like, you know what? All this land on Greenland... Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we gotta come to terms with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So over... Greenland was settled for about two centuries. And... After those two centuries, they disappear. And during, like, archaeological digs, they won't find any... any goods of any value. Like, no jewelry, nothing like that. Which implies that they left in an orderly fashion that they left single file yeah well <laughs> well that they're like are we gonna get out of here yeah let's get out of yeah, here yeah, alright and they packed up out. everything they owned and they left I, I feel like you know what it reminds me of is the end of uh, Spinal Tap when they're like the two guys are talking about how like how great it is that they can go on to other things now, and they're like, yeah. if anything, I'd be jealous of us. I am jealous of us. They're justifying that this <laughs> yeah. is a good thing. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what they're doing, and, I, and they're like, Greenwood's... Uh, Greenwood. Green... Lind yeah. is great. Green Lake. Like, green Lake. Greenwood, <laughs> yeah. Green Lake, Green Lind. Yeah, Greenland. I was confused those three. They're like, this place is great. And they're like, can we just stop lying to ourselves? Yeah, can we not? <laughs> We're trying to justify the stupid decision to move here. <laughs> That our ancestors had. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a it's a total uh, fucking uh, Griswold vacation at that point in yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Like, aren't, isn't this such a great time we're having? <laughs> yeah. Hurry up and have fun. Yeah, it's mandatory. Yeah, we're going to Greenland. And you're gonna like it. Yeah, and they were kind of being supplanted by proto Inuits mm. that weren't there before, and they were like, you know what? It could have been like the same people that they had fought with over in Vinland, or at least maybe a, a They followed them back. Yeah, something. Could have been. We don't, have no evidence. But they left because they were there and whatever, you know, and just too far away from everything. 
the numbers are being decimated. Their children left first, you know, like the younger people left first. And it's kind of like what happens in like a small town. Oh, yeah. You know, like the younger people leave, old people go there to die, the town dies. Yeah, the, 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 they usually call those towns, like, there, there's a rhyme for it. It's like, for the newly wed, the nearly dead mm-hmm. uh, towns. Yes, mm. newly yeah. wed, nearly dead. Yes, Could have been Emmett, Idaho. I wasn't going to say it, I'm just but kidding. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. Now, it isn't known what ultimately happened to Leif Erikson, or how or really even when he died. But we think it was sometime around 1020. P.M. <laughs> C.E. <laughs> C.E. <laughs> so with Europe ravaged by the plague, the Norse trade routes started to dry up, like down the Volga River that I was talking mm-hmm. about. All those trade routes started to dry up. Uh, Europe was also trading more and more further south into Africa, where they could get more plentiful and better quality elephant ivory, cheaper and easier, and all year round, rather than relying on the migratory patterns of walruses. Yeah. Walruses can get in that water. You can't catch them after that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you think about it, elephants... Yeah, you know, uh, it's bigger tusk is bigger tusk. way bigger than a, than a walrus tusk. Make sure you don't ride on it. Yeah, don't do that. No. You can grind high. that up for so many boners. I mean, no, that's rhino horn. Yeah. <laughs> Most horns will give you boners. That's At least it works say. for me. If that's you, what they if say. You Looking right. at the pictures on the internet. Yeah. Right. I mean, a uh, human horn from Futurama. Yeah, yeah. The hum- the lower horn. <laughs> So yeah, because of the harsh climate, little arable land, people left. And not for one big cataclysmic reason, but for a lot of small reasons. That's After- how most relationships end. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it's like, it's not you, it's not you, Greenland, it's me. It's me. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. To this day, Greenland is still considered part of Europe. Like, for a long time, uh, Denmark had it, different people have it now. Anyway. Like, uh, please just... Just take, take it. it, yeah. It is considered an island still, uh, so it is the largest island in the world, and it also is the least densely populated territory on Earth. In 2020, the population of Greenland, all of Greenland, is 56,770 people. Oh, wow. cool. So it's a, a mid-sized festival. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a mid-sized cool. festival for that whole place. Beautiful. For, for the biggest island on planet Earth. And yeah. you know that's all LARPers over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Well, here's to you, Greenland. You are the holiday fruitcake of uh, <laughs> countries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you gotta make it, but nobody, nobody wants, wants it. it. <laughs> Dude, that was like, oh, thank you. I, uh... <laughs> I gotta say, if we have any listeners in Greenland, I feel a little bad. <laughs> we spent no, just no, uh, an hour talking shit about there. I'm not, I'm not talking shit about Greenland. I mean, anyone that lives in Greenland, and they got they're made out of tougher stuff than I am. Oh, yeah. what I'm saying is, I don't have a problem with the island, but the people of Greenland, they can <laughs> suck my dick. <laughs> See, I was talking about I know. It the opposite. And I way. disagree. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. People of Greenland, I love you. You are tougher than me, and. Uh, most people are, frankly. The chances of us ever even meeting anyone from Greenland, I gotta feel are low. What if we go to Greenland? Well, I'm, I'm down with yeah, that. Yeah, hey. I've uh, flown over it. We got our first uh, international tour date, folks. Post-COVID, we are going to Greenland and Greenland only. So the only way you're going to see the History Boys live is if you go to Greenland. Yeah. So good luck. There's going to be a solid three people there. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be yeah. a, a, our version of the Fire Festival. Us, because yeah. I'm not yeah. showing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we're we're all gonna we're all gonna set out, but we're doing it by boat, and not all of us are gonna make. Yeah, it. Yeah, we all have our own boat. <laughs> yeah, those that survive will be there to perform a great live show for you. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, though, this is another fucking crazy ass story. This is pretty. This crazy. is a fun one. Yeah. I uh, my favorite characters are uh, Eric because of the person I envision in my head about this intense like violent psychopath who just listens to loud music in his garage and listens to like 80s 70s rock <laughs> yeah like he has a camaro yeah yeah, yeah again w- one of those guys who likes fog hat and he yeah. thinks that uh motley crew and poison are for pussies yeah. yeah yeah and they are 
No. That's, I don't know. Like, you I'm a pussy. <laughs> you can like what you like. I don't give a shit. Everything's stupid. Every rose Everything. has its thorn. If everything's <laughs> stupid, then nothing is stupid. There right? you go. So, but there, the problem is there's varying degrees of stupid. Yeah. Everything's true. stupid, but some stuff's more stupid. Yeah, it's true. Um, that's another one. Another one in the the can. I don't know what the can is. I guess it's the internet shaped can. It's a tuna can. It's a tuna can. <laughs> that is the tuna can that is our internet that that you guys listen to our uh, show on. But uh, thanks so much for listening. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let Jerry do all all the heavy lifting on this one, <laughs> like I always do. Well, Tyler, I don't know if you know this, but I go last, so I do that at the end. So you 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 can go ahead and move it. Around this Introduce way, counterclockwise, yourself. from the way we are sitting. Uh, uh, I'm Tyler Armstrong, a history boy. I'm signing off. I don't know. <laughs> like, what, 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 what am I supposed to do? Yeah, that. You did it. Good I'm, job, Tyler. I'm Christopher Whedon. I'm a history boy, signing off, ready to uh, seize the day. Be hungover again tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Like it was today. It's going to be even worse uh, tomorrow. Today I was a history boy. Tomorrow I will be a hungover boy. <laughs> Today I was also. A... You're gonna say history man. I will be a history man. I will finally make love to a woman if my wife lets me. Yeah. <laughs> Doubt it. Uh, I'm Zach Mack. I'm also a history boy, and man, I fucking love you guys. Which and I guys? love you, the listeners, so much. Oh, Zach is in I love you guys mode. Yeah. I don't like you guys. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, Zach. you know what? <laughs> Pieces of shit. Piece of shit. It's oh, gonna get cut out. I know. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nothing's gonna cut um, out. Oh wow. Uh, one, one thing to uh, one thing I kind of want to like uh, throw out just uh, for listeners is we are moving to a bi-weekly format, and yes. this is mostly because the world's moving back to normal. A lot of us have to go back to our jobs. We loved rocking out episodes every single week for everyone, and we'd mm. love to keep on doing it, but. You know, um, doing research for episodes, getting them all together, getting all of us together, uh, is an act uh, that we only have uh, the, uh, I guess, financial and psychological energy to do every other week. It's a Herculean effort. Yeah. Yeah. But we're gonna keep on making them every other week for you guys. We're gonna always, we're always gonna be back. And yeah. um, we're not you know, going anywhere. We're just yeah. moving to a looser schedule. Trying to put, uh, we want to give the episodes all the attention and love they deserve. Yeah. And it's a little difficult when we all have to work. Mm-hmm. We're doing it for you guys. Yeah. And uh, in addition to that, um, you know, um, maybe maybe someday down the road we'll be able to get back to a weekly format. And uh, and when we can, uh, we're happy to do it. Yeah, and if you guys really like want to help us out with that goal in mind, uh, we do have a Patreon. There's nothing on there right now. Yes, uh, we we have we have ideas of things that we could do for higher tiers, but right now it's just you know if you want to throw a boner away, it might help us out. Um, throw a boner. Yeah, throw, throw a, a boner. boner. I like that. <laughs> Th- throw throw one erect penis our way. <laughs> like, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, yeah, if you pit. want to donate, you can yeah. line them up there's, so that we can suck them like circus seals. There's a uh, we're I, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have separate tiers, and at each tier you get a picture of. One of our erect penises. No, no, uh, no Chris, Chris, we one. scrapped that idea. We <laughs> scrapped that idea. There's, there's no. For ten dollars a month, you get the smallest one. Mine. Uh, that's, that's our fans only, dude. It's our, our <laughs> only, only fans. Yeah. Our only fans. Sorry, yeah. I don't. I don't even know enough about it to say it right. But, uh, uh-huh. but no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a thing, but you're but it's not going to change the amount of content that we're no. that we're going to be making going forward and into the future. Uh, and we look forward to uh, you know um, having you guys back to listen to us tell more history stories. Absolutely. And yeah, I am Jerry Nash. I'm a history boy. Thank you again, as always, for listening to the show. It really means a lot to us and everyone that reaches out. It's just so good reading all these emails and. You know, DMs and comments on all the social medias, you know, everything that people have to say is, it's really great. And you have no idea how much it means to us when we, when we read those. Mm-hmm. Even the slightest little compliment, like, it just really like warms Like, you guys don't suck as bad as I thought yeah. you Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my and, favorite one. And, uh... <laughs> I wrote that, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, you know, History Boys. And Just we do spilled. listen to your suggestions, we and do. we do uh, do episodes on those topics. They get put yeah. in the pipeline, for sure. We yeah. put them in the pipeline, I start research on them, I get books ready, I do all that. It's a lot of work, so they're, I, they are being worked on. 
But oh boy, does it take a while. So <laughs> you're, you, you might see it, you know, some ideas a little later, some ideas a little sooner, but that all has to do with certain workloads. Maybe sometimes things are timed a little better, you yeah, know, like right. it would be good if we did this right now, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll kind of drop what I'm doing and go to it. But yeah, I, I do read all of those. I, we listen to all of those. We add them to our list. We do all of those things. Um, anyway, I, I hope you stick with us through this bi-weekly schedule. As Tyler said, we do have a Patreon. Nothing's on there right now. If you're donating to our Patreon, which you're welcome to do. I'm not forcing anyone to do this. <laughs> uh, it does. It would help us. It would help us out a lot to, you know, to keep the show going. And especially if we want to move back to a weekly schedule, which I would like to do, but we need a lot of Patreon support. We gotta and, quit our and, jobs. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, we need a lot of Patreon support. We need we need sponsors. Specifically, and things like Jerry that. needs to quit his job. The rest of us could probably keep. I'm actually, not jobs. working at <laughs> all. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just not telling people that. Specifically, <laughs> I would have to quit my job in order to to do that. Yeah, it would take sponsorships and and a lot of Patreon support, but. You know, we have listener support right now, and right now, I'm just really thankful for that. So thank you again. Love you, bye.